Okay, now I'm going to show you how to use polyester resin. But first, remember your health and safety. Goggles and gloves are essential when using polyester resins for a number of reasons. If you spill the catalyst in your eye, you could be permanently blinded. So we must, must use goggles every time we prepare to use polyester resin. The resin itself is an irritant as well, as well as being oxidizing and corrosive. When selecting a pot to mix polyester resin, we must choose one that's compatible with polyester. You can tell this by the symbol on the bottom of the pot. If it's a plastic, you see a triangular symbol with a number in the centre. That corresponds with the particular material that the cup is made from. Put the pot on the scales, press zero to take the weight of the cup away, and then add the quantity of resin that I require. This is the polyester GP resin in its raw form, uncatalyzed. This is the catalyst. As you can see, it's corrosive and oxidizing, which means it's very harmful for your skin or any mucous membranes. So, to work out a percentage of catalyst that we need, move the decimal point across to the left once, across to the left twice. So moving the decimal point across to the left twice and then doubling that figure. It's a very easy way of working out percentages. You can see on the left is the uncatalyzed resin, in the middle is the catalyzed resin and on the right is the cured resin. Okay, so to do layering and marbling we need three different colours but we need to ensure that each pot has the same amount of catalyst in so we use one pot to mix the catalyst into and then divide it into the number of pots corresponding to the number of colours that we require. Polyester resins have particular pigments designed to be used with them. You cannot use regular paints. You must use specified pigments. Polyester resins only require a small percentage of pigment to colour the resin. So we only use a very, very small amount of pigment. We can always add more. We cannot take it away. Each time you've used a pigment, replace the lid immediately. Okay, so now we've got our three colours. I'm going to do a layering effect. So I'm going to just pour in a separate colour, one after the other, until the mould is full. Doesn't matter which. An important point to remember is not to add too much pigment as this can weaken and soften the resin. Now to do marbling effect, we add the colours into one pot, take a clean stick. As you can see now, those colours are starting to blend together, but still retaining a little bit of individuality. Okay, after an hour or two, this should be set. It's always a good suggestion to leave these castings overnight to cure. Although you can accelerate the cure time by putting in our digital oven. Okay, so first stage is to use wet and dry sandpaper. We'll wet the object and the sandpaper to prevent clogging and to further scratching of the surface. Once you're happy, we can then use a buffing wheel. This is the buffing wheel. Now, before we use the buffing wheel, we must ensure that we have the appropriate health and safety equipment, i.e. a mask, as 
The buffing wheel can project microfibers um, into the immediate vicinity. If you inhale them, it's not good for you. Also required is a visor. This protects your face from any of the flying lint coming off the spinning buffing wheels. And also, if anything catches and flicks around the buffing wheel into your face, it's not very nice. Okay, so now I'm going to use a little bit of abrasive. This is a, a buffing compound, which is it's kind of like toothpaste, really. So we apply a little bit of that to the to the buffing wheel, and then choosing the correct side of the wheel, leading edge always faces down. Never be tempted to buff too much at once. Always do one side first, pointing down, and then turn it round, doing the other side first, pointing down, like this. Never expose the top edge to the spinning wheel. Okay, so let's just remove this marbled one as well, just to show you how it looks underneath. It looks quite different from the surface of the casting. But you can see how the colours have blended together to create quite a unique looking item. This can be sanded and buffed in exactly the same way as the previous.